Hi there, David here once more, coming at you on behalf of Being Crypto. Today, we'll be taking a deeper look at a type of crypto you've heard me talk about before, but we've never fully explored, and that's stablecoins. Stablecoins have emerged as an absolutely essential aspect of the cryptocurrency world that's proven beneficial for retail traders, institutions, and even banks. However, not all stablecoins are exactly the same, and at times, they have had their share of controversies. That's why we'll be breaking this asset type down, explaining how it works, and touching on several of the most important options available today. We'll also be talking about one stablecoin that hasn't even launched yet, but stands to be very important in the near future, so be sure to stick around for that. Okay, without any more delay, let's get into the world of stablecoins. Let's begin with the obvious question. What is a stablecoin? If you've been watching our videos on here, you may well have already picked this up, but if not, all you need to know is that stablecoins are forms of cryptocurrency that are, by design, pegged to a specific value. Often, this will be the value of some form of fiat currency, such as the US dollar. This is, of course, incredibly useful for traders who want to effectively trade in a local currency, but don't want to deal with the on and off ramps that can often be tricky or limiting when converting between crypto and fiat. In a similar vein, stablecoins are also important hedges against the volatility seen in so much of cryptocurrency. However, stablecoins can be more than this as well. For example, they can be pegged to the value of a physical commodity like gold or even a basket of assets. There's really no limit, though for many, the fiat varieties are often the most useful. This stability is enforced in multiple ways, but generally falls into three categories. Stablecoins can be either fiat collateralized, crypto collateralized, or uncollateralized. We'll explore each one now. First up, fiat collateralized. For this class of stablecoins, the idea is that the crypto asset is fixed to the value of a fiat currency. To that end, whatever entity is issuing the stablecoin needs to have reserves of that currency that match the amount of the digital version in circulation. We're also including stablecoins that are pegged to another asset, like precious metals, as a subcategory here, as the underlying premise is the same. Physical reserves act as collateral for the minting of digital assets, which are then locked to that value. Pretty straightforward. This is again extremely beneficial to the overall cryptocurrency ecosystem, but does tend to come with one caveat, trust issues. Users of these stablecoins must trust that the company issuing them is actually maintaining adequate reserves. To be fair, many companies are transparent and allow for independent audits, but it has been argued that this inevitably brings in greater centralization than is comfortable for many crypto purists. Assuming the company is being honest, and this is actually one of the safest forms of stablecoin, because in theory, no matter what happens in the market, each coin should always still be redeemable for the underlying currency or commodity. Moving on, there are the stablecoins collateralized by other cryptocurrency. Thanks to smart contracts and price oracles, these types of stablecoins can still easily be set to track the price of any other asset, only they do so using crypto to provide the underlying value. This means they generally need to be what is known as over-collateralized, that is to say, they need larger reserves to back up their stable asset. This is due to price fluctuations in the crypto market. See, if your stablecoin is literally backed up by actual US dollars, for example, then you will always be collateralized appropriately because even if the value of the dollar changes, your reserve obviously stays in sync. If your reserve, however, is Ethereum, and your stablecoin is designed to use code to enforce its US dollar pegging, then the amount of Ethereum you need to stay collateralized will depend on the value of Ethereum as well. Hence, these types of assets generally have much larger upfront capital needed to stay operational, but when done properly are arguably even more flexible as well as in line with traditional cryptocurrency philosophy. The major risk here, however, is that if the underlying coin were to completely lose its value, it would presumably take any stablecoin built on top of it along with it. But this is rather unlikely, at least for those built on highly established networks like Ethereum. Lastly, the uncollateralized variety of stablecoins are a bit more rare and more complicated, but essentially they use smart contracts to algorithmically control their overall supply in order to keep a single unit of the asset stable at a specific value. So, if the asset is supposed to be pegged to the US dollar, and market conditions have it going above $1 per token, the underlying algorithm will begin minting new tokens and selling them into the market until the price comes down. Conversely, if it drops too low, the algorithm will buy and burn tokens. In theory, this system can then maintain a peg even without any form of underlying collateral. However, this is generally the most dangerous form of stablecoin as well. Keep in mind, the algorithm is basically trying to constantly balance out supply and demand, but if demand collapses, so does the whole system. With literally no collateral backing everything up, then as soon as demand disappears, there's simply no way to retain any value and the price of the asset will plummet, most likely forever. So it's true that in many ways this is the most pure form of stablecoin, but it's also the most risky. Okay, now that we've given a basic overview of what they are, let's talk specifically about some of the more popular assets out there. 
I know I repeat this every week, but we can't touch on all of them as there's far too many. The ones we'll be covering here are fairly well accepted and trusted by the community. But of course, if there's an asset that we missed and you think should have been included, please let us know in the comments below. We're going to start with what is among the oldest and generally most accepted stablecoins in the market now, and that's Tether. Tether has a bit of a history, but the short version is that Tether was effectively launched in 2015 by a company called Tether Limited. Tether Limited is owned by iFinex, which also operates the popular crypto exchange Bitfinex. Tether was originally launched on Bitcoin using the OmniLayer protocol, but later largely migrated over to Ethereum. Since then, Tether has actually spread to multiple other blockchains, but to this day, both the Ethereum and Tron-based varieties seem to be the most popular. Tether has seen some controversies over the years that have involved, among other things, the veracity of its original claim that it is 100% collateralized and that every Tether is backed by a real US dollar. The story has definitely evolved over time, and the company itself has since acknowledged that Tether's actually backed by a mixture of actual USD and other assets held by the company. To ease concerns, Tether Limited did recently release a report that details the company's complete reserves, showing that it is in fact fully covered for its issued coins. The report has even been verified by an independent accounting company, so it sounds like Tether will probably be staying on top for some time. Now, let's talk about USDC. USDC is a coin very much like Tether in that it is pegged to the dollar and backed by physical reserves. USDC was launched in 2018 by a partnership between the company Circle and prominent crypto exchange Coinbase. Originally, the stablecoin was launched on Ethereum, but has since also expanded onto Stellar, Algorand, and Solana. USDC is popularly used on Coinbase, but also has a major presence, as many stablecoins do, in the DeFi ecosystem. Know that USDC reserves have technically not been audited, however they are, on a monthly basis, attested to by Grant Thornton LLP, a respected accounting firm. Next up, TrueUSD again has a similar philosophy to those we've already outlined, but is designed to be completely transparent, regulatory compliant, and verifiably collateralized. It does this by operating on a proprietary platform called Trust Token that employs complete adherence to KYC AML regulatory standards. The company also allows a full independent audit of their reserves on a monthly basis, making this stablecoin the only one we've discussed so far that meets all of these criteria. Otherwise, it operates in much the same way and is still highly popular with users. Then there's DAI. In development since 2014 as a part of the MakerDAO project, DAI is a highly popular stablecoin that is also pegged to the US dollar. What is unique here is that users can create their own DAI by providing collateral through the MakerDAO platform. This offers both great flexibility for users as well as decentralization and transparency. Since all DAI in circulation only exists if sufficient assets are locked into a smart contract, it is by necessity always backed. These benefits mean that DAI has proven to be another heavily used asset across the decentralized finance world, as it offers additional independence and trustlessness over most other popular systems. There are other highly similar but platform-specific stable assets out there, like GUSD for Gemini Exchange or BUSD for Binance, but by this point, you likely understand the idea. There is, however, one more asset we need to discuss, as it's looking like it'll be launching soon and probably be a major player in a short amount of time. This asset is being called DM, though it was formerly referred to as Libra. The project was originally conceived by Facebook, though the company has since stepped back a bit and instead put primary control into the hands of the DM Association. DM was at first planned to be an international stablecoin pegged to a basket of differing assets, but after notable regulatory pushback worldwide, the association has decided to focus on the US and use a one-to-one -one USD backing model like many other coins. It's also going to have full regulatory compliance, so again, expect identity checks to be the norm. While the underlying technology is much like so many other projects we've just discussed, what makes this stablecoin one to watch is that it's likely going to be launching this year and already has an impressive number of partnerships that may help cement it into e-commerce quite quickly. For one, expect transfers and purchases to be possible through both Facebook and Instagram, which could have a major effect on how social media users engage with money. Additionally, seeing as big name service providers like PayU, Uber, Lyft, Coinbase, Spotify, and Shopify are all members of the DM Association, it's pretty safe to say we'll be seeing support across all of these platforms and likely many more. So know that we include DM on this list because we think that there's a chance that it's going to try to give the established stablecoins a real run for their money. And though no official release date has been revealed, the latest reports still have the project launching in 2021, so be on the lookout for this asset real soon. By the way, if after this video you're looking to get your hands on some stablecoins, then be sure to check out the Stormgain Cryptocurrency Exchange. Stormgain is not only one of the hottest up-and-coming exchanges out there, it also offers several valuable perks such as a loyalty program, bonuses for referrals, annual interest on crypto deposits, and using the official app you can even begin cloud mining cryptocurrency for free today.
If you're looking to purchase stablecoins, Bitcoin, Ethereum, or dozens of other cryptocurrencies, then just know that Stormgain offers a bit more than most other exchanges, so be sure to check them out. Well, that'll do it for today, as you should now know enough to start working with stablecoins. With so many options out there, just be sure you do some research on what type you want to be using for your purposes. Of course, new developments happen all the time in the world of stablecoins, and you're going to want to keep up. For that, come check us out at beincrypto.com, where you'll find daily updates, analysis, and more. Also, don't forget about our other content right here on YouTube, such as interviews, educational videos, and our bi-weekly news show. And lastly, if trading is your thing, then come join our trading community on Telegram, where you'll get access to the latest technical analysis from our top traders. As always, thank you all for watching, and we'll see each of you again right here real soon.